So we continue with our teaching on the amazing possibilities, amazing possibilities, and you will add in God. Glory be to God. Our text remains Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I tell you again, with God, our God, our Father, all things are possible. Last week, we looked at the five W's, the five W's, in order to experience the amazing possibilities in God. We said you have to engage the five W's of how to bring about the amazing possibilities in God. Glory be to God. We looked at number one, will. W number one is will. The first W is will. And three aspects of will. And there could be more. Explore more. Be like the Berean Christians. When you hear the word, you hear the truth, you go and research more. Number one, under will, determine to live for God and glorify him with your life. That is the will of God. That's really the will of God. When you determine to live for God and glorify God with your life, that is really what God wants. That's how to enter into the will of God. Number two, determine to know the will of God. Now getting specific, which is the word of God and promise of God for your life. So what are you going to spend your life doing according to the word of God and promises of God? Number three, determine to succeed in life. Determine. Set success goals for yourself in line with the word of God. And when you have done that, burn the bridges. Burn the bridges. Like the children of Israel that you've seen there in that Exodus chapter 14, we read. They heard the will of God clearly. They knew it and they started. But they, when challenges came, what did they do? They started looking back. They were crying, ah, why did you bring us out of this land of Egypt? You should have allowed us to die there in Egypt. No, 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 you're not going to die in Egypt. Burn the bridges once you have determined to move out of Egypt, to move on the path of success in life. Don't go back. For example, you have determined to come out of poverty, never you go back to poverty. No, 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 no. You have determined to come out of sin and live a holy life because that's the starting point. Never you go back to sin no matter what. And as I always tell, when things happen to me, I say, I have no alternative. <laughs> God Almighty, I have no alternative. i rather die in you. That's why I don't live in regret. Never. It doesn't matter what it is. No regret because it is for whatever in this God. Never backward. No time to bemoan things. Moving forward. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, I press forward. I press forward. I press forward to the mark of his high calling. Past is past. I always tell my wife and my children and whoever is around me, I say, see, in this life, know this. Anything that didn't take your life, you have gone through it and you're still alive, move on. You, have, you, you are greater than that thing. But unfortunately, the wisdom of the world tells people to sit back and dig. They dig back. They say they are psychologists, psychoanalysts, or whatever they call themselves. They dig back to now create confusion, create emotion, create depression, move on. So in that Exodus chapter 14, God there in verse 15, if you read it, 15 and 16, God said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? Tell the children of Israel to move forward. And you, Moses, that rod that is in your hand, stretch it over the sea. Hallelujah. God has given you a mouth. God has given you his word. God has given you the weapon of prayers. We will come to it. And God, above all, has given you a name above all names, the name of Jesus. Oh, in that name, I always tell us that name is, is there is nothing like the name of Jesus. There is no bomb ever to be built by mankind 
that will reach the potential of the name of Jesus. By that name, Jesus, you can turn the whole world around. By that name, Jesus, you can sit in one local community and change things in the world's headquarters. If at all there is anything like that. <laughs> Glory be to God. Ha! Ah, beloved, so burn the bridges. Once you have made up your mind and determined to be successful, and then apply those three things we have said. Number two, wisdom. So number one of W, number one is will, W number two is wisdom. And we have said wisdom is what? Knowing the right thing, doing the right thing that brings the right result. Number three is waiting. Number four is walking. Number five is worship. So we treated the first two will and wisdom. Last Sunday, today, we want to look at waiting, walking, and worship. We'll go through that very quickly. And let me remind you and ask like a question. Do you want to experience the amazing possibilities in God? Do you want to stop wishing like many people are wishing? They wish that they would just say one word and billions will fall from heaven. They wish that they would just say one word. They would just wave their hands and they are on top of their classes. They wish that they would just wave one hand and the dead rises from the dead. Beloved brothers and sisters, if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. But it is not so with our God. Neither is it so in the world. God has given principles because God is a God of principles. And that's why you have to live by the principles of God. God said the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith because faith is, the, is what operationalizes grace. Faith is the operator of grace. So waiting, what is waiting? Waiting is spending time to be guided and instructed by God. Waiting is about spending time to be guided and instructed by God. Psalm 27, verse 14, David here said, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, on that waiting, I want to touch on like four points. David is a man who understood the secret of waiting. And that's why he spoke in that place. Wait on the Lord. Psalm 27. Oh, if you are familiar with Psalm 27, it's a powerful psalm. David said, wait on the Lord. If you're familiar with that psalm, uh, verse 14, then if you read from all, from verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me, did you see that? To eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. But what happens to you when the wicked come to eat your flesh? You wake up and cry, right? You wake up and panic. Don't panic. The wicked must stumble and fall before you. For it is written, no weapon fashion against you. Fashion against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn. But note that. He says, you shall condemn. I shall condemn. Do you know that? Do you know how to apply that weapon? That it is written concerning you. So when you wake up, it is your duty to condemn that tongue that rises against you. Amen. Okay, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So waiting involves, number one, inquire, inquire. Number one is inquire. David, this was one of the secret weapons of David. David knew how to inquire of the Lord. In this same Psalm 27, if you go with me to verses 4 and 5, hear what David said. He said, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. What is that that he will seek? He said that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God, and to inquire, to behold, his, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, to seek out, to find out the mind of God, the plan of God, to hear his word and his voice concerning my specific matters. Verse 5, hear this. He said, for in the time of trouble, he shall 
hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. In 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel, I believe, chapter 30, verse 8. 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. There the Bible says that David inquire of the Lord. David inquire of the Lord. He says, shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? I think we should read that. It's very instructive. First Samuel chapter 30. Let's see. All right. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. Read it with me. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered. Who answered? God answered him. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. This was David's secret weapon. He knew how to inquire of God, to know the mind, the plan, to get the strategy. Remember, waiting is spending time to be guided and instructed by God. Number two, under waiting, is learn to hear the voice of God. It is by the Holy Spirit. Learn to hear the voice of God. It is by the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the spirit of God, you will not hear the voice of God. It's that simple. And there are many who have the spirit of God, but they don't believe that they can hear the voice of God. So they don't hear. And you remember in the, in the case of Samuel, Samuel, God called Samuel. Time will fail us to go there, so you go and read it. God called Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and ran to Eli because the Bible says it clearly that Samuel did not know the voice of God. There are many Christians who do not know the voice of God, the voice of their God. They don't know the voice of their master, Jesus. And yet Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and follow me. Let's go there. John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a harling, he who, he who is not the, the, uh, the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The harling flees because he is a harling and does not care about the sheep. 14. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. Let's jump. Okay, I'll read on. 15. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and lay down my life for the sheep. 16. And all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Did you hear that? And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Okay, let's look at 3, verses 3, verses 3 and 4. It says, to him the doorkeeper opens the door, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He calls his sheep by name, and yet you do not hear him. You can't hear Jesus. Why? The Spirit is always speaking. Jesus is always speaking, always instructing and guiding his children. So you have to pay attention. That's why the place of waiting is very important. Number three, place of waiting is meditation. Paying deep attention to the word of God and his spirit. As I said, the spirit of God is the key. It's the Holy Spirit that connects us, reveals Jesus, gives us the understanding of the things of God, and helps us to hear his voice, helps us to hear the voice of God, helps us to know the voice of God, the voice of Jesus. He is our teacher. He is our counselor. So you must learn to pay deep attention to the word of God and the spirit of God. It means to reflect on Jesus and the Father deeply. You must come to a very personal relationship, a personal appreciation. I don't want to use the word understanding, a personal appreciation of God in your life, of the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, in your life, and the connection of 
the Holy Spirit that connects you with the Father and the Son, personal. And number four point is prayer, the one we like doing, prayer. Yet we still spend little time praying, the real prayer. For prayer, you must set. Hear me, I said you must have a set time to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to pray. Brethren, pay attention to this. There are certain prayers that are personal, certain prayers that are personal. The Holy Spirit will give you those prayers in such moments that you need that victory. It's not the prayer a man teaches you. Glory be to God. I'm trying to see how I can put the example that I have because it's personal. Amen. Glory be to God. It is personal. So there was a time um, things were like nothing was happening. And I think I've shared, let me share this one because I also spoke to a sister who was going through some difficulties. I didn't know, but doors opened for her. Is the Isaiah chapter 60 prayer that I've taught us. I think verses 10 and 11, 11 in particular. God showed me that somebody didn't teach me. I was reading the Bible and I needed something. So it started by the keys of Joseph. I had walked, and people would tell me, oh, you're walking well. Ah, you do well. In fact, at one point, one of my bosses called me. He said, I hear you are performing magic. <laughs> that was the word he used. And in my organization, it was very competitive. It was like you started school all over at a far higher level. But when we started work newly, we go with our bags to, to the office. We will stay sometimes till like 5 a.m. and then run home, shower, run back before others return. That's how it was. And we will do this as young men gladly, young men and women gladly for months. At the end of the year, they will say somebody too. And people were banded and ranked. That happened for like five years. Determined to be successful. I grabbed my Bible and I gathered it together. And I said, it can't be. God, this must change. And I was not among those who were said to be there. Even when they would praise my work and say all this, I said, God is going to change. My father, something has to change. And I was given the Joseph Dreamer. And I started speaking it out. I would write down and stick it to my word. I am a Joseph dreamer. I am a Joseph dreamer. I am a Joseph dreamer. I said, sometimes I would declare in a meeting, I said, last night I had a dream. But now I wait for Judas to, I wait for the 11 to strike. But I know God will cause Judah to speak. In that moment, as I went on, the keys of Joseph were given to me, as I have taught before. The keys of skill, discipline, the, skill, the key of skill, service, self-discipline, and sacrifice. I decided to engage those keys. I went and took the books. And I went to the depths of my discipline and I studied and I learned. And I was given the key produce reports. So I prepared. So the ranking came as usual. And my bosses rang me normal as they used to do, not knowing I have received the keys. So usually you will sign and accept the ranking. Mind you, I have done this for four years past. So for them, I was normal. What was the point? But this time, fortunately for me, there was a change. A new supervisor came. And when a new supervisor came, he saw me. I'm sure he probably would hear this our uh, discussion. He saw me, and I was sitting with another colleague of mine. He said, for two, he brought our report that year. He said, for two of you, I believe you don't have any problem with your report. And what was this report? That we were just normal, average staff. Not knowing I had prepared. By the spirit, I have received the keys. So I looked at my report and I smiled. 
I wrote there, this report does not reflect my performance in the year. I went further and I said that I challenged the entire department to produce anybody who can stand in competition with me. That I produce, I still remember the number, I think about nine personal report plus others that I supported that they should produce anybody. So I went to my boss, my boss was shocked. Because you remember, he had already said he has seen us. So for us, he believed uh, there is no issue. Normal report was fine. But not knowing that he came at the time when this man has received the revelation from God, has received the keys of Joseph, and things must change. I have determined to be successful by the grace of God. And so he was shocked. And I told him, I said, there is nobody else. I challenge you, bring anybody in the entire department. I didn't mind age, level, years of experience. And he looked at me. He said, okay. So they went for their meeting and held, and he said, ah, this is what this young man did. He has refused to sign the report, and these are his comments. When he mentioned the comments, the overall manager, he said, hey, I have been looking out for this young man because I have seen his performance and I was wondering what has been going on. He took the paper and told them, if you don't accept his challenge, this is what I'm going to do. He changed my profile. <laughs> and that's how the things changed from that day. Glory be to God. Beloved brothers and sisters, make up your mind. So prayer to hear from God. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, which is a scripture we love to read for prayer. What does the Bible say? Finally, my brethren, remember this was Paul speaking. He said, finally, finally, this is it. If you grasp this key, you've got it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Twelve. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. There are some of you that are looking for witches and wizards. You're looking for them from your household. Oh, no, no, no. If you carry the mark of the Holy Spirit, if you carry the mark of Christ anywhere you enter, they know you. So don't worry about those of your family. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, against rulers of darkness. But we have been given a weapon. We have been given the whole armor of God. And the devil has been defeated and they are no match for us at all, at all, at all. That's for us. Talk less of the name of Jesus. Oh, again, I pray that you will make the name of Jesus a reality. I pray that the power of the name of Jesus, the power in the name of Jesus will be a reality in your life. Brothers and sisters, we will come to that because we have not even touched 0.00001% of the power in that name, the name of Jesus. We'll continue because of time. Say, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. 14, stand therefore having gathered your ways with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always with all prayer. So you've got to set time to pray and ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to pray. So I was telling you that certain prayer are personal. So as I prayed that prayer, I added the Isaiah 60 that I told you. 
that the gates shall continually be open for me and that men will come with procession. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. So I pray that prayer continually. The gates my, of my own promotion, my own time, be open, be open. And boom, the gate opened, as I told you. And so I saw that and I held on to that key. So I didn't know a sister was going through real challenges in the office. And I was sharing this with her. I taught her this prayer and she took it on and started praying and praying. Boom, the gate opened. She was transferred out of a very um, cantacorous uh, uh, setup. <laughs> and that was how she moved on. Glory be to God. Move forward. God will move you forward in Jesus' name. We have dealt with waiting. Waiting number four is prayer. As I said, that the spirit will help you develop the weapon suitable for that moment and circumstance. Another testimony, remember I shared with us about a sister who cried out like Jabez. Oh, many Christians have forgotten how to pray. First Chronicle chapter four, verse 10. I remember one time it was the in thing among Christians. A man of God caught that revelation and wrote a book. Jabez prayer, and many people were praying, but now we've given up on it. You better go back and learn. The spirit helps you. Because very recently something happened to me and I engaged Jabez prayer again and the result was marvelous. Jabez prayed, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. And that I may know no sorrow, no, no pain. A man who was born in pain and sorrow said that he should know no pain, no, no sorrow, but rather God should enlarge his territory. And the Bible says, and God had him. And Jabez became more honorable than all his brethren. A sister who observed that things were going rough in her life. Blessing always finishes in front of her, but she lived with it. I told you the story till that day. When she was at the petrol station during, during fuel scarcity, and she happily with pregnancy jumped out of the car because it was her turn, came to open her tank. While she was opening the tank, the petrol attendant shut down and said, Madam, we have closed. She begged, and, and then she remembered by the Spirit of God, and she cried unto God and said, Oh God, let me never queue up for fuel anymore. She said, From that day. <laughs> The mercy and favor of God took over. So much so that her driver noticed and said, oh, we don't lack fuel anymore. And she smiled and said, yes, you are enjoying grace. Beloved brothers and sisters, there is amazing grace. You must learn how to engage it. I tell you about another sister. In fact, this other sister was the one who, who testified because we were always sharing about these amazing possibilities of God. About a woman who was taking care of her mother, her sick mother, and, and it was so much suffering and pain. And she just kept asking God, is this how it will be in my life? Is this how it will be in my life? As she was taking care of her mother, one day the spirit prompted her and she cried out unto God, that Jabez prayer. He said, oh God, instead of me to suffer like this, take my life in this line. Let me have help. Let me not leave my old age in pain and suffering. And of course, do know that there are bases. It's not just empty words. She was taking care of her mother. So she had the basis. But don't worry about the basis. Just live a Christian life. The spirit will prompt you at the right moment. And she cried unto God. And God released the grace of divine health upon her. She lived, if I remember clearly, the story clearly, I think around her 80s or 70s, um, um, kidnappers came to her house, old woman, and said, Mama, we have come to pick you. Mama said, ah, well, my children, don't worry, please sit down. Let me go and tie because she was with rapper. Let me go and wear proper thing. You know, this journey, we don't know how long it will take. And I'm coming. They sat down. My man entered and scaled through the window, went scaled through the wall in the night, about 2 a.m. or so, and ran. Oh, glory be to God. Strength and health. So 
how to engage or how to experience amazing possibilities in God. We say number one W, the five W's, number one W is will, number two is wisdom, number three is waiting, number four is working. So we've talked about number three, waiting. So number four, walking. But I just thought walk. Walk like you have no God and depend on God as if you have done nothing. Walk like you have no God and depend on God as if you have nothing. Just like I gave you my example uh, with the keys of Joseph, the key of skill, service. You have to serve, walk, even at times offer yourself freely, walk, but develop skill. Not when they give you things to do, you mess up. You just do shabby things and yet you want to be paid. You want to make a million, um, two million, whatever amount of money. What do you have? What is the quality of your product? Mm -hmm. People think that the favor of God means that you do shabby things and then God will close the eyes of everybody to favor you. See, those things are witchcraft too. Those things people are teaching you people all over. How is that, that it is witchcraft? You better come out of it. Yes, God will favor you. In fact, we'll close this with the story of David. But there is a principle. So walk, James chapter two. 17 to 18, and then 20 to 22. Go and read it. Faith without work is dead. But I want us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, 42 to 51. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 42 to 51. The story of David. Let Go there with me from verse 42. I'll read it again very quickly. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. 43, so the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. 44, and the Philistines said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the earth and the beasts of the field. 45, then David said to the Philistines, you come to me. He replied to him. He didn't wait. He didn't keep quiet. As I tell you, a man of God always said, he said, a close lip is a close destiny. You must release your destiny with your mouth and with your walk. Faith without walk is death. David said to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, this day, like we pray, this day, this day, this Egyptian that you see, you shall see no more. This day, this Goliath that has been terrorizing your life, you shall see him no more in the mighty name of Jesus. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. This is it, this is the purpose. There is a God in Israel. As we said, number one W is will, determined to live your life to glorify God. Everything about you must be that God should be glorified. Everybody who sees you must say your God is mighty. Your God is amazing. Your God is astonishing. Like they said of Daniel, they said, oh, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the God of Daniel, they are, he, he is the God that will be worshipped. When Daniel was brought out of the den of lions, and when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought out of the fiery furnace. Oh, glory be to God. So it was. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his back and took out a stone. Can you see that he prepared? He didn't come just wishing that God will just do something, somehow, somehow. He prepared. It is in the preparation, your work, your hard work, in your labor that God will manifest. He put his hand in his back and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine 
in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. There was no sword where he had something. And so I want to announce to you again, as I always tell people, that if you don't do something, God will do nothing. If you don't do something, God will do nothing. So I challenge you to begin to do something. Because when you do something, you will see the mighty might of your God manifesting in that little thing that you do, in that effort that you make. Do something. Take a sling. Take a stone. Throw a stone like David. Do something. Imagine David going against a general in the army with all the weapons. He went with a stone. But at least he did something. And God used that little which he did and granted him victory. The Almighty God will give you victory in the name of Jesus. Finally, worship, worship, worship. Your worship. The last W, W number five. This is so personal. Your personal communion with God and services to him. This is what worship is. You see, that's why I keep telling you what, what people call ministry. Setting up a gathering center is not a ministry. That isn't the ministry. It's what you do there for God that is the ministry. It's what you do there for humanity because of God that is the ministry. It's what you do there because of your personal communion and commitment to God that is the ministry. Your whole life must be a ministry. Everything you do in life must be to serve God. That's why number one W is determined to live for God and glorify him with your life. When you have done that, as I said before, Romans 8.28 will be fulfilled in your life. All things work for good to them that love God, who are they called according to his purpose. So worship, your worship is a very personal thing. Yes, there is corporate worship where we gather and worship him together. That's true. But it still comes down to personal. You know why? Because worship is a matter of the heart. So it doesn't matter how we gather together. If your heart is not right with God, you cannot worship God. Worship is not what you say. It is not the song you sing. Worship is not the bowing of your knees nor of your heart. It is from the heart and by the spirit of God. It is this disposition of reverence from your heart prompted by the spirit of God that brings about the song we sing that is acceptable, the actions that we do and make that is acceptable, the obeisance that we pay to God, and it is acceptable, that is worship. So I will encourage you to learn worship in Revelation from all chapter four all the way down. Chapter four, five, six will really teach you worship and will also reveal the mysteries of God a bit more to you, you will see that Jesus is worshipped in heaven and the Father is worshipped. The Son, the, the Father and the Son, they receive our worship. Glory be to God. And the Spirit of God helps us then to worship God. So in John chapter 4, verse 7, to 26, then 31 to 34 is a whole lengthy read, but it's important, brothers and sisters, uh, bear with me. I know I've uh, spent a, long, a lot more time than I intended to spend. Well, let's do this because this teaching continues and what we're going to be dealing with will be to minister um, it will be impartation, as I always like to do when we go through this. So John chapter 4, you remember, it was the engagement with the woman at the well. So if we were starting reading from verse 7, 
a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples has gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Verse 12, the woman spoke to Jesus. He said, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. 16, Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you who have, is, Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. He said, for you have had five husbands and the one whom you know, you now have is not your husband in that you spoke truly. Ha, the discussion continued, but let me jump. 19, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. 20, our fathers worshiped on this mountain because this is where we are going. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. 21, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming. 23, read it with me. But the hour is coming and now is. When the true, everybody say true worshipers. When the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth. For the father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Glory be to God. Look at that verse 21 again. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Oh, is this not what is going on in the world today? The world wants you to come to mount, that mountain or to that Jerusalem to worship. Unless you worship in that mountain or in that Jerusalem that they have built, you cannot worship God. But Jesus said, <laughs> the hour has come that the true worshipers of God will have to worship him in spirit and in truth, just like I have told us before. And so the gathering centers are important for whatever ministry it is meant for to fulfill. It is good, but worshipers of God must have personal relationship and worship, communion with God, with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit of God. Recently, my wife was just sharing, sharing a preaching that a man of God preached, and it was posted by another pastor. So wonderful preaching because of the mentality of the walls that are swallowed Christians. Christians, you must come out of the mentality of the walls. The walls that you go to, that I go to, that we go to, is not the church of Jesus Christ. This must be spoken bluntly to all Christians. There is no denomination on earth that is the church of Jesus Christ. Absolutely none. It's not in the Bible. The Bible encourages us to gather ourselves together. 
But that does not mean the walls becomes the church. No wall is the church of Jesus Christ. We have used that terminology wrongly. The church of Jesus Christ is the body of Christ, which you and I who worship God in spirit belong to. So let's use what Jesus did here, because we must speak this truth and live this truth. And so this man of God got on his pulpit and was talking about women who wear short and men who wear things and all that and all that, and was raising all that he could raise. Don't come to church because for them that is church with short things because no man should suffer that uh, temptation, that lust that you provoke. That's the women who wear short things and vice versa for men. Beloved brothers and sisters, you will listen to such message and you think it is a preaching. It is absolute useless thing to say on the pulpit. You know why? Because you are supposed to be preaching Jesus for those harlots. You should be happy when an harlot steps in with that short skirt into your gathering center. That is what the gathering center is meant for. Oh, those men of those days, Charles Finney, with the fire of God burning in him. Oh, John Wesley would preach and sinners who don't want to go out of their houses because they don't want to meet the word that John Wesley would preach. But a man of God today, because he thinks his gathering center is the church, have forgotten to preach Jesus to the sinner that needs Jesus, who has come to his gathering center. If their hearts are regenerated, they will not wear short things to come and look for husband and tempt people in your con con congregation or gathering center. We must correct these things. So here was Jesus with a woman who has had, who had had, Five husbands. Let's look at it again. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. Because he already knew who she was. 16 or uh, 15. The woman said to him, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, 17. The woman answered and said, to, said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. Look at the woman. But Jesus spoke to her about the eternal life, the water that she will drink and will never thirst again. This is the water those women with short things have come to look for in your pulpit. Don't mind whatever drew them. You build the walls so they may come. Now they have come. Give them the water or the living water. The water that they will drink and they will thirst no more. Jesus is this water. Jesus is this water. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus said to her, woman, if you know who is asking you for water you will ask him and he will give you the water of eternal life verse 10 jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of god and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water may we give the living water to those who come to our pulpit, to those who come to our gathering center. And may the walls that the world has built generations after generations that have manipulated Christians and make them forget the principal call of God upon their lives to serve the Lord, to serve God and love him with their whole heart, with their whole soul, with their whole strength, with their whole mind, 
and their neighbor as themselves, and our neighbor as ourselves. May that love of God return in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I pray for all your children who have heard this word, that you will use this word and you will transform their lives, that your amazing possibilities, amazing happening, amazing grace will take place in their lives to your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God Almighty bless you, brothers and sisters, and thank you for your patience. God bless you, and bye for now.